Hi, this is Steve with OS Nexus, and in this video, we're going to go through the process of creating a highly available storage pool. I've already logged into the QuantaStore UI, and I've created a storage grid with two systems in it. We're going to use these two systems as an HA cluster pair. Basically, 4427 is a, is a Dell server, and the 4429 is a Dell server. Looking at our design tool, you can see a little bit about what this config looks like. You can see the two servers here in the attached 24-bay uh, JBot. That's what our, our uh, configuration looks like for the presentation here today. Uh, so let's jump right into this. Uh, to create the pool, go to the Storage Pool tab, and you can either click, click the Create button here, or you can right-click to get to the pop-up menu and click Create Storage Pool. So we can change the name of the pool and the RAID type. You can click Auto Config to auto select some drives. What Auto Config does is it automatically selects the drives based off of the available JBODs to ensure enclosure redundancy. Now in this case, we only have one JBOD, but say you had uh, several large 60 bay or 100 bay JBODs, the Auto Config button will save you a bunch of time. If you click on it, it'll automatically select drives to stripe across those JBODs to ensure that enclosure redundancy. Um, now I'm going to click OK and get the pool created. You can see the status of the pool create operation in the taskbar, and you can see this from every system uh, simultaneously. So whether or not I logged into box 4429 or 27, uh, because of the grid technology, we can see what's happening uh, across all the nodes in the grid just by logging into any of the nodes in the grid. So there's our storage pool. It's got a couple of mirror pairs. And uh, next, we want to make that storage pool highly available. To make the pool highly available, we need to have a IP address that can float back and forth between 4429 and, 40, and server 4427. And that virtual interface that can move back and forth will get associated with the storage pool and uh, make it so that we can, in a highly available way, move uh, the connections, uh, but whether it's NFS, iSCSI, or SMB, with the pool and ensure high availability for workloads like VMware, databases, backup, and, and, and so on. So the next step for us is to go create that uh, heartbeat mechanism between the, two bo between the two boxes so that we can attach a virtual interface to the pool. So to do that, we're going to create what we call a site cluster in QuantaStore. We'll call this site one, and we'll put these two systems in it. And it's already selected an IP address for us off of both systems, which are on the same subnet. Um, we can pick any uh, any pair. Just want to make sure that these are on the same uh, the same network. So now we've got our site cluster created. You can see that it runs pretty quickly. Um, process is almost done there. And then once that's done, we want to set up a second heartbeat ring. The first one allows us to heartbeat on one network port, but if that cable got pulled, we don't want the system to fail over when it unnecessarily doesn't need to do that. So we're going to add a separate, a second heartbeat ring here that's on a different network. And uh, that one looks just fine. I'm just going to click OK, and it's going to add a sec second heartbeat ring to the Site 1 cluster. Uh, you can see it's still working on finishing up the Site 1 cluster creation. Ah, I did that a little too soon. It was still in the process of finishing the cluster create from before. Let me clear those tasks out and try that again. There we go. So now we've got our second heartbeat ring. And once this is done running, we're just going to go back to the main tab and select the storage pool and make it highly available. And what we'll be doing there is creating what's called a HA group and then associating with associating a VIF with that HA group. The way to do that is you can right click on the pool and then cho choose create high availability group. Uh, you can also go to the ribbon bar and choose HA group from there. Um, there's not much to do here. Uh, you just choose which pair of systems you want to be able to fail over the pool back and forth to. Um, when you create the HA group, it's going to do verification checks to make sure all the drives are accessible from both of those systems. 
and that's done. And so now we have our HA group. Now we need to put an IP address on that group in order for it to be able to do HA failover. So we're going to go put a HA VIF on there. Uh, we have a 100 gig network here, so we're going to choose the 182.168.28.2. There's a IP on those ports, but we're going to put a virtual IP on top of those, and we want that to be on a different network. So we're going to call that 10.1.44. Dot, uh, uh, dot 29. So this is the virtual IP for the pool. So all connections that are made to that pool should be directed at this IP address. Oh, it's saying that that particular port is not available on both systems. We need to make sure when we create a virtual interface that the port on both systems has the same name. So we're looking for like an ETH0 or an ETH1 that's on both sides. If you don't have a matching port name on both sides, then it won't know where to move the VIF to when it moves it over to the other side. So Quantistore prevents misconfigurations like that from happening. So we're gonna pick a different port this time and create a virtual interface on EN01 just to keep it simple. So here we're gonna do that again, 10.0.44, call it, 1.44.29, so it's on a different network, on 255.2500, uh, so it's a slash 16 network. And now we'll get the IP created. So right now you can see that the there's a down arrow on the HA pool. That means that it's offline. As soon as the VIF is created, we're going to see that that clears. And now this is in the normal state, and this pool is now highly available, and it's running on Quantastore 44-27. So if we want to move that pool from this server to another server, we can just right click on the pool and say execute pool failover. And it automatically selected the paired system, which is 4429. And I'm going to click OK and it's going to start moving that pool over. It takes around around 10 seconds for a pool failover to complete. Uh, looking at the system here, you can see it's already done. So now you can see it's at corner store 4429. That's all there is to creating highly available pools with, with Quanta store. Uh, at this stage, um, you would want to fail it back and forth a couple times, back and forth between those two boxes. That's going to verify all the cable connectivity and other things. Um, one last thing to go look at is look inside of the controllers and enclosure section. This is going to show you a picture of the JBOD and its connectivity to each of the HBAs that are in the system. You want to see that HBA connectivity uh, with the various drives uh, on both systems. You can see here that I've got clear connectivity from each of these servers down both uh, SAS uh, HBAs uh, to, to the JBOD. Oh yes, and one last reminder, remember the getting started button in the upper right hand corner. If you uh, missed any of the steps that we went over today in setting up the uh, HA storage pool. You can find that here's the third button inside of the getting started page that's accessible here and also in the upper right hand corner of the GUI. If you have any trouble setting up your HA uh, storage pool configuration, feel free to write us at support at osnexus.com. Thanks for watching.